up now, the steam is coming, and there's a little binder just here, and it will heat up in the steam, and it'll go click. There we are. So we here at the Taylor Center here, the Royal Academy, and you have the little, right here. So what are we looking at here? This is a little heat engine with a low expansion on top and a high expansion underneath. And when it heats up, the metal expands and stresses and suddenly it reverses itself and goes click. And that switches the kettle off. So we had the Taylor Center, we had the Enterprise Hub, Royal Academy of Engineering, and uh, this is your name. So who are you? I'm John Taylor. Um, I'm 80 years old, and I've been inventing for 70 of those years. And uh, uh, you've been inventing, for example, uh, in the United Kingdom, and, and it's pretty famous for tea, right? And so you're part of the tea kettles that billions of people are using around the world. Yes, yes. Um, the kettle is an essential part of British life, and it was unknown on the continent in the 80s, but because of the automatic kettle, um, it has now become uh, used through, not only throughout the continent, but throughout the world. It's not only for tea, it's, it's for coffee, it's, 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 for, it's actually for food. People are using, this is the cheapest uh, uh, way, the best way to, to get, to get uh, good food, right? Absolutely. The electric kettle is the most efficient way of boiling water, that the element gets the energy straight into the water, whereas if you put a kettle onto the top of a hob, then the, the element is not efficient, and you end up that the, there's a big waste of energy, and it's um, a, hob a hob top kettle used in America is about 25% efficient. And if all the kettles in America on their hob tops were changed overnight like that to British electric kettles, you could switch off all the nuclear power stations in America and never notice the difference. So, so this is the style right here where there's no, basically no cab cable and it's plastics and it's cheap, right? No, it Affordable? No, no. It's not cheap, it's inexpensive, inexpensive which is a yeah. different thing. All right, but uh, so this is just an example of what you've been doing, and we're here at the Taylor Center. So what is this about, this place around here? Should we walk around? Yes, yes. It's, it's to keep the a center in London for inventors, young people in particular, to actually have a center that they can go to to get advice in rooms like this, have a meeting, and we walk over here, and we've right. got we've so, got some young people. We've got some young people here. It's basically like a, a, a it's a hub and a center, meeting rooms, and then advice. And uh, some startups, right? Some some guys and, and girls around here doing a. Yes, we've got a startup young lady here. Oh yeah, all right. Hello, who are you? My name is Vicky Hamilton. I'm the founder of a company called Recoil Knee Pads. So basically, it's a new knee pad for manual trades workers. So it uses two layers with six springs in between. And the idea is when you kneel, the impact is absorbed by the springs and the pressure is then spread evenly across your knee. Um, I can show you some pictures of it if you'd like. Nice. So, so do you think that the hub is going to uh, enable information for these young startups? And, and uh, it's like a workspace, right? The whole purpose of the hub is that it's a center to give information of intellectual property, finance, um, how you make things, and then how you change an invention into innovation, into a practical product. So right here we're seeing, this is a video? Yeah, so basically uh, this is the business that I've got, the product that I've got. Um, it started at my university as part of my engineering degree and then I just carried on with it, applied um, for an enterprise fellowship with the Royal Academy of Engineering uh, and I've just continued to develop it from there. And what are you ho hoping to uh, be able to do from now on? Ideally uh, launch it on the market and look at internationalisation. So we did a test batch last June but we're really hoping to scale it up and start selling in the US, Canada, Australia 
and really just get the product out there and get people aware of it. And we're here with uh, uh, Dr. Taylor, and you've been doing stuff that's in, in billions of devices, so hope it'd be nice yeah. if you, that's what you'd like to do, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Get, yeah, get everywhere. Yeah, yeah it's, really, um, it's really helpful to hear from other people who have been there and done it themselves, so it's a brilliant space. So uh, what kind of advice do you think these, these guys need to have to be able to get to success? The important thing is to make things right as well as you possibly can and then worry about what it's going to cost because if it's the best that can be made in the world there'll be a market for it. You think the UK has uh, pretty good stuff like good engineering, good startups, good uh, ideas? Historically, I it, right? I think it has the best. I think it has the best of innovation, invention and the services that uh, go with it. Uh, there's Cambridge University, there's some other universities that are pretty, pretty good. Yeah, Cambridge University, I've just endowed a professorship of innovation and that changes an invention into a product. That's the main purpose of innovation. Let's just look a little bit around here. So there's basically there, maybe busy, maybe not. Okay, right here. Some, uh, some basically the startups can sit around, the talk, get things done. Absolutely, it's wonderful facilities here um, for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 20 people in this, this room, whereas in the, it's one of the bigger rooms where the other rooms are suitable for five or six or, or a dozen, whatever it is. There's the facilities here uh, available to be used. And uh, those are, um, ha have, you, have you interacted, have you seen some of the startups, what they're doing and what kind of projects they have? At the moment, no, I've, I've been ill and unfortunately um, I've not been able to see a lot of what has taken place so far. But the, the idea is that they, they can apply and the, the winners get access here, right? And yes. they, they help them launch. They, they help, That's right, uh, yes. They help get to that millions. Is, That's that the that important That is the thing. object of the exercise, yes. All right, maybe let's, let's, let's walk around. Let's walk back there. So um, I've, seen, I've, I've searched your name on the internet and I've seen you, you also have some uh, other um, uh, passions like in in clocks and in... Yes, clocks and I, my passions are clocks, flying, uh, sailing, mountaineering, skiing, uh, you name it, I love doing it. Flying, like with the special airplanes? Yes, yes. I even saw on, online that, that you had an accident uh, last year, right? Well, if you're going to have an accident, you may as well have a proper one, yes. I'd never had an accident before. What happened? Um, I don't really know. All it's right. one of those things that uh, um, I had a co-pilot with me and he didn't know either. So It was a scary moment. No, not scary. No, Not scary? Not time to be scared. Okay, no time. It's like that movie where the, the, the pilot lands on, on the, the lake, what's called the... The Hudson. The Hudson. Yes. Yeah, it was that kind of moment. You've got to get the wings level and that will help you sort it out, yes. And uh, you, you were part of doing a clock? And a special clock, and what, what, what do, you, do you have clocks also, like a collection, or...? Yes, I collect antique clocks, and I also make clocks. There's a, a clock outside a Corpus Christi College in Cambridge, which um, is completely different from a normal clock. And a normal clock is boring, it just tells the time. Whereas my clock is an invention, and it's a homage to a great inventor, John Harrison, and it's a clock turned inside out so that the mechanism is around the outside showing how it works and the, you have to find a new way of showing time and it shows time racing away around the dial and the dial itself is a, a, the start of time and it comes out in a wave and so that the things all tied together give you modern art and a clock and something that actually it's, works. It's got LEDs but it's mechanical. Yes. And uh, uh, John Harrison was one of the British clock, kind of like inventors? He was one of the greatest inventors of all time, let alone clocks. Um, he invented bimetal, which I use in large quantities in the uh, thermostats and controls. And uh, he also invented the first clock, which would go to sea. 
and that enabled the, the same system is used by the GPS. It all comes back to time. And GPS uses time to find out where you were. And Harrison was the first person who made a sea clock. That, that revolutionized the uh, 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 boats, I mean sailing. Absolutely. It, it, it allowed you for the first time to, no pun intended on the first time, but it allowed you for the first time to find out where you were by taking the clock with you to give you the time back at Greenwich. You then found out what the local time was and the difference between the two is how far around the world you are. And the clock that you've made is uh, using the grasshopper? Uh, using the grasshopper escapement actually designed by John Harrison as the first device which had virtually no friction. Nobody had thought about it before him, and he designed the first clock with the components which didn't require oil because of the low friction of the system. So I'm from Switzerland, and I've been to the Patek Philippe Museum and stuff yeah. like that, but I wonder uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, antique clocks do you, do you have? Uh, is it all from British or could be from some other? Yes, you can't, collect, you can't collect everything, so I tend to collect uh, English clocks. And it's in the golden age of when the pendulum was first invented and you got the first accurate clocks in the world, uh, way before Switzerland got interested in watches. Yeah, that was later, right? This Very was, much but later. They, they did yes. a lot of, uh, they still do a lot yes. of uh, mechanical going, small going, things. Going back uh, at least 300 years, um, when the pendulum was first being introduced and accurate clocks were being built for the first time. And you say that uh, uh, the clock is actually one of the most important inv inventions ever. The, the clock to me is, uh, is different. Everybody says that the wheel was the most important invention of mankind. The wheel is the servant of mankind, whereas the clock controls mankind and has made a bigger impact on the way we live than the wheel itself. But I think the, the, what you've done with the, the tea, tea kettle is also a pretty big deal. And, uh, and uh, you also, have you, done, have you been talking and thinking about some new things? You, you were talking about the sun cooker, like you, solar. Are you trying to do something like that? If you're an inventor, you can't stop thinking. So that uh, all the time, new ideas. Ideas are easy. It's making a practical reality that's the difficulty and the practical reality, the changing it, that's what innovation is all about. And that's why I'm so keen to endow this new professorship, to concentrate on innovation. So it's not only about inventing. It's not only just about coming with uh, ideas it, it, or... Uh... Ideas are easy. Ideas are easy. Um, everybody has good ideas. It's changing that idea into practical reality that is the difficulty. So do you imagine here it's going to be, get very, very busy here at the Taylor Center? There's going to be uh, the, the new revolutionary things that might get into billions of, uh, change billions of lives. Yes, I'm sure that uh, it's already busy. Um, I'd like to see it overflowing with young people, uh, learning, swapping ideas, talking with mentors, and uh, being the center that they know they can come to to get the information.